special meeting of the board and held in the, in the public. We, we have this meeting uh, for a couple of different reasons. Uh, one is to present to you, the community, the uh, financial situation we are in, and also is to listen to ideas and listen to comments, and uh, hopefully everyone can get a better understanding of where we are right now and um, uh, the gravity of the situation. Um, there will be another time at the end of the meeting for guest and public comments, so if you want to wait and hear, that's fine. And uh, if you want to talk then, that's fine. If you want to talk now, that's fine as well. <clears throat> but we're asking uh, that you please state, and stand please, and state your name and address, that way we know you're in the district. And uh, because of respect for others and the amount of people in the room, we ask that you keep it between three to five minutes. Uh, that way everybody who has, who uh, feels, to present some comments has the opportunity to do so. So, as you can see, there is only one action item on the uh, agenda tonight, and uh, we will be hearing of that as we continue on. So with that, we will open up for guest and public comment. Oh, and also as well, um, for any, uh, for respect of the process and respect of any ideas that may come forth, uh, we will not be responding to any comments today. With that, Lori. Well, um, I also coach 7th and 8th grade basketball. My concern is getting more money into the school. Um, so what I'd like to propose to, we have a few coaches that are staff, and I say continue paying those people, but for the volunteer coaches such as myself, a couple others that aren't staff, you make that a voluntary position and you cut my pay. I wouldn't want to see pay to play for students because I know a lot of the students couldn't afford it. And I'd hate to see that. I'm already, I was down to eight kids for seventh, seventh and eighth grade basketball. <coughs> Sorry, I had eight on the eighth grade and five on the seventh grade. You take away that, I'm down to three, four kids for pay to play. So I say make voluntary positions as coaches that are not staff, so part of the edge of staff, um, people that are getting paid. That's eight to 12 people right there. There's some extra money right there. And then also open the school up in the summertime to have different courses. Um, because we have the Clio, Camp Clio, which is great, but open it up senior high through junior high, extend it a little bit more, but do a culinary or arts course and charge the parents for that. Um, I pay daycare, 55 bucks a day per kid. I'd rather send my kid to a culinary arts course for a day, for a week, have them learn something. Because once they get to school, once they get to college and move out into an apartment, a lot of kids don't even know how to do the laundry. They make peanut butter and jellies and that's it. So make it a culinary arts, do a small engines course, do uh, photography, take advantage of the resources that we have in the area. Um, and it's time for the community to step up and offer those types of things as well. Um, I'm in the beginning stages of wine making and I'd love to teach a course on it. Kathy Patton does a lot of fitness stuff. So I think as a community, I know Lauren Rogers is great at photography, she could volunteer her time to do a class and all the money that's brought in, $25, $35 per person, donate it to the school. My wife did a art class over in Bel Air, shorts for one night for 35 bucks. She said there was 20 to 30 people there. That's $1,000 a night there by us volunteering to help save a position, or two. That's my thought. Try to figure out how I can increase my revenue. Now, I'm not really smart, I'm not really smart or brilliant when it comes to school. I don't understand all of the things that the superintendent understands. But I do understand, like everyone here in this room, that you can't make $50 a week and spend $75 a week and make that work out in the budget. I just, you know, for me, I just cannot see us continually cutting staff. There are teachers here, I know the tenure system you said is not in effect anymore. I don't want to see anybody lose money, but I certainly don't want to see anybody lose their job, especially when we've already cut so much already, we've already surrendered so much of the future. And so, I think that 
maybe I'm not offering a lot of ideas, but I agree with everyone in the room that's saying we need to just figure out how to get more money. Part of it is cutting costs. But I think that's kind of the easy, that's the easy way. You know, that's kind of an easy just to sort of just eliminate something there. There's some money. But my niece, uh, Megan King, um, really benefited from the sister that has influence, and I appreciate that. And, um, but I also know that being on the school board, uh, a school isn't a business. We're not able to just generate. <clears throat> or uh, if it was a business and we were not doing good, we'd be creative and sell something cheap, but that's not the way we can do it, and our teachers are our biggest asset. So I'm, I just feel that this, you know, and I don't think it helps anything, but I think this is a problem that's, that is not just a Central Lakes problem. Um, teachers are, under the spotlight and um, uh, paying for education is not uh, popular right now. And I think that uh, Central Lake is, and all the small schools are suffering from that. And I think the school board's done their job and done the best they have been able to do. Our position to be cut, and as um, someone that's spent a lot of time with her as a student. I just want to inform the people that are making that decision how much she does for our school. Um, she does so much for the elementary school and the high school and goes above and beyond what she has to do. She does many jobs that she doesn't get paid for that I know many students have the fear that if she's not there anymore, no one's gonna take up all those jobs and we're gonna lose a bunch of the activities that we all love so much and that help our school and that help our students. And also she not only does those jobs, but she goes out of her way to find the students that aren't involved in those and just make sure they're okay and make sure that if they need any help, they get that help. So I just want to encourage all the decisions being made to not only look at the job that she's being paid for, but also all the stuff that she does And I've been listening to everything and I only hear what we need to cut back on spending and I don't hear anything about how we can increase income. And something that I'm surprised I haven't heard anything about today is something called pay to play. I attended a different school, the same class as our school that did pay to play all through, I was in uh, volleyball, basketball, track, everything from middle school to my freshman year at this school. And it was alleviating when I came here to be able to not have to pay for it. But I do think that with the amount of kids at our school that do sports and do like all these other activities, I do think that would be a great start for like increasing our income instead of cutting back. So. Last week on the things that I do in the district, um, hopefully to make a difference with, with students and um, in capacity uh, wise, um, whether it be leadership opportunities, um, guidance, whatever whatever it might be. Um, but a couple of things that that um, came to mind after um, I left here um, again. Um, Four years ago, I was asked um, if I would take the PE position, and I said what was that, whatever was best for the school. Um, and so, four years ago, I became a PE computer and librarian. Um, I took on that role with more, more formal training. I'm not a PE teacher. I'm not a computers teacher. I'm an elementary certified teacher and a science certified teacher. Um, I created the curriculum um, for computers based on the state standards because there wasn't one and that's what um, was just shared with you. Program that I put together um, to make sure that our students were getting a good education and, and, and the opportunity to learn, a role in the 
new schools that offer that, which, quite frankly, um, I think pretty awesome that our kids are you know functioning, especially with um, M step and so many of our kids having to take tests on computers starting in third grade in the state. They have some access and exposure um, to that. Um, and we talk about the evaluations and, and such, and um, I am highly effective um, where I rank in, in, in the numbers. Um, again, I want to go back to the fact that I'm teaching something I wasn't certified to teach, but yet my scores <coughs> have continually gone up teaching um, PE and computers and being highly effective.